Hello guys and welcome to another Hellfire Citadel Mythic Guide. I'm Roger Brown and with me is Joshua. Hello everyone. So today we're talking about Tyrant Velhari and it's a pretty straightforward boss but it is actually kind of a gear check and also it can turn into a wipe really fast. You need everyone to stay alive so this fight is just about execution. There's not too much to think about tactic wise. Yeah, the Tyrant fight is almost like heroic. There's almost no tactical differences because the abilities don't change too much. There's a minor changes to some abilities, but you're not really going to notice them. The setup you want to run for this fight in Mythic are 2 tanks, 4 healers and 14 DPS. For the 14 DPS, you don't want to have too much melee DPS or healers in melee range that is, because the Infernal Tempest in Phase 1 can still quite hurt a lot if you have too many of them. You should aim to have about up to 6 melee DPS. Anything higher than that, and the Infernal Tempest is going to hurt too much. Now in terms of abilities, just like in Heroic, you have phase 1, 2 and 3 with different adds spawning in each of these phases. But the boss does cast some abilities throughout the whole fight. And these are firstly the Edict of Condemnation, which is the hammer that comes from the sky and does a lot of damage in the circle, split amongst the people who are inside of that circle. It's just like Heroic, but this time around, the guy who has the debuff gets a 70% slow debuff as well, which makes it harder for the guy who has the debuff to get into position so that a lot of people get hit by it and you don't have very few people getting absolutely smashed by it. Best way to handle this ability is to just move into melee with it, since all of the melee DPS, the tanks and the majority of the ranged people are gonna get hit by it. Now the hard part about the Edict of Condemnation is that it does three ticks and every time the circle becomes smaller and smaller. So the third tick is the most deadly one because you need a lot of people to be really stacked up onto the guy with the debuff. This is especially hard in phase one because of the other abilities that the boss casts in that phase. Second ability which the boss casts throughout the whole fight is Touch of Harm and this is a debuff which gets casted on a random player and it absorbs all healing until it has absorbed enough to have it removed. The difference with Mythic compared to Heroic is that this time around this debuff also does 15% of the target's current HP as damage every 2 seconds, which isn't a big change to be honest. Basically the way you handle this ability is you just pump as much absorb shields as possible to the guy who has the debuff and also heal him, spam heal him until the debuff gets expired. Now you can actually dispel this ability which makes it jump to another random player but it shouldn't be needed unless it's some really crucial situation. Now the last ability that Tyrant is going to be casting throughout the whole fight is the Seal of Decay. This is the tank debuff that reduces healing and absorbs by 10% per stack. For this debuff, you just tank swap the boss around 3 to 4 stacks and you're good to go. Now the Tyrant fight is again, like in Heroic, 3 phases, but the auras that each phase has last until the end of the fight. So if you are in phase 1, you have only 1 aura. If you're in phase 2, you have the phase 1 and the phase 2 aura. And if you are in phase 3, you have all 3 auras at the same time. Now the good thing is that the auras don't keep increasing after you've passed the phase. After the phase is over, the aura will start decreasing. And eventually the auras will cap out at the minimum amount of damage dealt for the phase 1 aura. And a maximum health for the phase 2 aura. And for the phase 1 aura, the aura of oppression, you're going to be taking damage while moving, just like in heroic and normal. And that's why you just want to move the least amount of possible in this phase. Now because the theme of this phase 1 is the aura of oppression, which you take damage every time you move, all of the abilities that the boss casts in this phase 1 are designed to make you move. And you need to handle them with the least amount of movement. Starting off you have the Annihilating Strike, which is a cast that the boss does on a random player. And when it's finished, it will do a cone of fire damage towards that player. So anyone who is not targeted by this ability and is standing next to the guy need to move to the sides. And whoever gets hit by this ability will also spawn a searing blaze underneath them, which is just a small circle of fire which explodes after two seconds. And if you get hit by that, you obviously take a lot of damage and you also get knocked up in the air. So basically, if you are targeted by this ability, stand still, get hit by it because you cannot avoid it. And then as soon as it's finished, you need to sidestep the circle on the ground. And anyone who is around you need to move away from you before the cast is finished to avoid taking any of that damage. Now the second ability is Infernal Tempest, which is the oh shit moment of this phase. Now the boss will cast this ability and it will 
deal damage to everyone in the raid in the form of four ticks. It's basically a channel cast which ticks four times. Every time there's a tick, every single player of the raid, including the tanks, the melee, everyone, will have a small explosion around them. That is why you cannot stack the whole raid on top of each other because it does AOE damage. And then they will spawn a searing blaze, the circular, underneath them every time this happens. So what you want to do is wait for the first two ticks of the channel and as soon as the second tick has been casted, you sidestep to the side and then wait for the third and fourth tick and then you sidestep back to your original position. This is a very easy way to handle the explosions of the searing blazes because the first one is not going to explode before the second one has spawned. So again, just wait for the first two to spawn right on top of each other, sidestep to the side, spawn the other two and then by that time the first two will have exploded so it's a safe zone again and you can just move back to it. Yeah, because the Infernal Tempest is going to be dropping the Searing Blazes under everyone's feet, the melee might be really crowded if you just randomly spread there. You want to have assigned positions in the melee, say the tanks in front, one melee group on the left side behind and one on the right side behind. This way the Searing Blazes will spawn on top of each other and you just have room to sidestep after the first two takes and then step back after the last two. Now the last thing that's going to happen in phase 1, and in phase 2 and 3 as well, is that after 10% of each phase, there's going to be an ad spawning. For phase 1, this is the Ancient Enforcer, and every time the ads land, they're going to be doing a thunderous crash. This will knock back everyone in the raid and deal a little bit of damage. Now the Ancient Enforcer is going to be casting Enforcer's Onslaught at its current target. He'll be spawning or throwing his balls towards that target, and then they'll be coming back after some time. Now these balls will deal damage if you get hit by them, they're pretty big, you can't really miss them, and then they also spawn searing blazes under the targets that they hit. Because of this, you just want to face the enforcer away from the raid, and if you see our positioning in the video, you can see that we're just facing it towards the exit of the room, not where we came from, and everyone else is spread around the rest of the room. This will leave the area in front of the boss free for these orbs to spawn and fly around without hitting anyone. Now positioning the ad and the boss itself can be really tough for the tanks to do because of the hitboxes and you really need to be careful when moving these. You need to take small steps because if you do too many big steps the bosses are just gonna run around you and you're gonna be like oh my god what are you doing? You just want to be really careful with moving them. Now the last two things I want to mention for this phase is firstly about the positioning. As you can see from the video we keep the boss basically where she is from the very beginning of the fight and then every range DPS needs to spread around the boss, of course leaving the exit of the room, the back of the room basically, free for the balls that the ad spawns to be casted towards. So the rest of the room is for the range DPS, but it's important that you're not too far away spread out. You wanna make a circle, but being really close to the melee. And the reason for that is for the hammers, the Edict of Condemnation, because if you get it and you have the 70% slow, you need to be really close to the melee DPS in order to make it there for the last third hit since it has such a small radius around the player. And the last thing about this phase is a very bad timing, a wombo combo, where the boss will cast her third Infernal Tempest and while this is happening you also have the Edict of Condemnation. Now you can understand that there is so much damage going on at that part of the fight because the Infernal Tempest no matter what you do everyone gets hit by the four ticks plus everyone is moving and because you're so long into phase one you're basically at the end of it the aura of oppression is dealing massive amounts of damage so you have to take all the damage while soaking an Edict of Condemnation. So it's really important that you have a lot of raid CDs going on and personal CDs as well in order to survive this Wombo Combo. Now if you have enough damage, you can actually plan to skip this Wombo Combo by transitioning the boss, which happens at 70% before this ever happens. It's a pretty good idea, but you need to have enough DPS in order to make this without using Bloodlust, because you're gonna need to use Bloodlust in Phase 2. Now you don't need to actually kill the ad before transitioning the boss into phase 2. As you can see from our kill, we had the ad around 30% HP when we transitioned the boss into phase 2. And you just finish the ad while you're in phase 2. There's no rush to do that because it's not really hard to deal with the ad's abilities. Now once the boss hits 70%, you are entering phase 2, so you're gonna have the aura of contempt increasing, which the longer you are in the fight, the less max HP you have for the whole raid, and the aura of oppression, which you had from phase 1, is going to start to decline, so you're gonna take less and less damage while moving, which is a good thing.
Now, as soon as this phase starts, you need a completely different positioning. Since you don't have the Annihilating Strikes, the Infernal Tempests, which you needed to be kind of spread for, now everyone needs to gather right next to the boss because you need a lot of raid healing going on in this phase. So every ranged DPS and melee stack on top of the boss, but on one of its sides. We did it by having everyone stand on the left foot of the boss and then whoever got the debuffs, which we'll explain later, move to the right side of the boss. And that's all the positioning you need to know about this phase. Now the abilities in Phase 2 are Tainted Shadows and Font of Corruption. The first one, Tainted Shadows, is a cast she'll do and it's going to be hitting the tank and everyone who's afflicted by Font of Corruption. This cast will deal damage at the end of the cast towards everyone hit, but also to everyone around that target. So everyone around the tank or around those with Font of Corruption are going to be taking damage. Now the good thing is that anyone who's afflicted by Font of Corruption will be immune to this damage. This is why we stacked up in two groups, one group with debuffs and one group without debuffs. The group with debuffs is everyone who has Font of Corruption, so they'll all be immune to the damage they would otherwise take if they don't stand in the right group. Now it's important that you move to the correct side once you get the Font of Corruption so you don't deal any damage in the raid. But it's also important that you move back to the raid once you lose the Font of Corruption so you don't die from everyone else that has Font of Corruption. Now you can be kind of unlucky with the timing of the debuff falling off and the boss casting the Tainted Shadows at the same time. So if you want to play it safe, what you can do is, let's say you have your Font of Corruption debuff with 4 seconds remaining and then the boss just casted Tainted Shadows. She will probably cast again when your debuff has less than one second remaining or it has just fallen off. So in order to not take that risk of, oh, should I stay in the group and maybe she cast it before and I'm safe? But if it falls off, I'm dead instantly because I'm gonna take the AOE damage from everyone on that side. So what you do is you just step away from both groups. Step behind the two groups or to the side if you're in melee then it doesn't matter if you get the cast with the debuff or you get the cast without the debuff because no matter what you're gonna either explode alone or you're just not gonna explode and you're fine and after that has happened you move to the left group again the safe group without the debuffs now as we mentioned the boss enters this phase at 70 percent and there's an ad spawning after 10 percent in each phase so at 60 percent Everyone is going to get knocked back from the new ad that spawns the Ancient Harbinger. Now this is a completely different ad from the first one. It's basically a caster lady and the only ability that she is casting is Harbinger's Mending. Which is just a heal which she is casting towards the boss. Now the good news is that it is interruptible. So that's what you need to do. You need to interrupt every single cast of this ability. But if you have a missed kick it's still fine because you can't dispel the heal from the boss. It's a uh, hot, you can't dispel it. Of course, the boss is still gonna get healed for a couple of millions, but it's not a total disaster. The bad news is that every time you kick this ad, she gets a stacking buff called Impatient Mind. Basically, she gets impatient with your kicking and she just gains a lot of haste. So she will cast this ability faster and faster every time. So your reaction time is smaller and smaller every time you kick her. So you need to be really, really fast towards the end of this phase because the cast is going to be super fast. Just like in phase one, you don't have to focus the ad. What you need to focus on is getting the boss down to 40% in order to enter phase three. That's the most crucial thing because the aura of contempt is going to reduce your HP the longer you stay in the fight. So if you pass a threshold of 30% HP, so if you start having 25% HP, 20%, you're basically gonna wipe no matter what you do because the tanks are never gonna survive that. Plus, you're gonna have the tainted shadows dealing damage and people are just gonna get one shot. So you really need to nuke the boss down as fast as possible and just cleave the ad off while kicking it. This is the phase where you need to push the boss as fast as possible compared to the other two phases. So you need to use Bloodlust in this phase. Try to time it as good as you can with your raid in order to stack it with cooldowns that people have and just maximize your DPS on the boss in order to transition the boss ASAP into phase 3. There are a couple of scary moments in this phase. The first one is when the ad jumps down and it casts the Thunderous Crash, the knockback to everyone, because that can mess up the positioning of the two groups. 
it's a very good idea to use a raid CD when this thunderous crash happens because if it's timed together with the tainted shadows it can deal massive amounts of damage to people and you might have a couple of deaths you can also get a really bad timing by having the edict of condemnation together with this so again just Try your best to survive this knockback. You know when it's coming. It's right when the boss hits 60% and just be ready for it. Now, the second bad timing in this phase is when you get the second Edict of Condemnation in phase two. You can't really soak it with the raid because you're just gonna die. So what you need to do is whoever gets this debuff explodes the first tick of it in the raid. But then as soon as the first tick has exploded, he needs to move away from the raid and just sacrifice himself or use an immunity like a deterrence or an ice block or a bubble. Doesn't really matter. Just move away from the raid. Worst case scenario, you lose a guy. If you have a combo dress, that's perfect. If you don't, it's still worth it. Now hopefully you can push the boss to 40% before you get the third edict because if you get the third edict you're going to be in quite some trouble where you might have to sacrifice an extra person or the raid will just die if you can't even move out. Now the transition from phase 2 to phase 3 is actually quite dangerous because the new aura is going to be increasing the damage that the raid takes but you're also still going to be having the old aura at a low percentage of max health. So everyone's going to be low health and taking increased damage. Now especially the tanks, they might fall over at this point in the fight like a wet paper towel because the boss hits them really hard and they don't have much health. Now once you get past the first part of phase 3, it actually gets a little bit easier because the health will be back up to a high amount and the damage taken increasing debuff is not that high yet. Once this phase starts, you're going to be moving the boss to the cross in our video. This is because we're going to be moving along the wall with every time she does one of her abilities. First thing that DPS will be doing is switching to the Ancient Harbinger and finishing her off as soon as possible. After that they switch back to the boss and at 30% you're going to have the add spawn again. As you've moved the boss to the cross and the add as well, the boss will start casting Bulwark of the Tyrant. This is going to be applying a despoiled ground under the tank and one random raid member. The whole raid just stacks up behind the boss and every time she spawns one of these despoiled grounds with her Bulwark of the Tyrant, you're going to be stepping out of it and just stand on the edge as you move along the room. Now the only other ability that the boss casts in this phase is called Gavel of the Tyrant. And she will cast this after three bulwarks of the Tyrant. So you get three bulwarks, then a gavel, then three bulwarks, then a gavel again, and so on. What this gavel does is just knock back everyone, depending on how they are positioned towards the boss. And also take a lot of damage in the process. And then after this has been casted, she also explodes for a few seconds towards the whole raid for some damage. So it's just a lot of damage plus a knockback basically. Now we did find a cheeky way to deal with the first gavel really nicely. Now as you can see in the video, after we have handled the first three bulwarks, everyone in the raid stacks on top of each other inside that pocket corner where there is a small pillar thingy. And what this does is everyone who gets knocked back, you basically don't get the knockback. So this helps a lot with the caster DPSers and the healers. Now, the reason why this spot is very nice is because at that point, you will have obviously killed the ad from phase 2 and the boss is going to be hitting 30% HP at that time. Now, when you hit the 30% HP mark, you're going to get a new ad, the Ancient Sovereign. Just like the other two ads, it will cast the Thunderous Crash as soon as it spawns, which again knocks you back. So using that position, you actually negate both the two knockbacks and it's a good time to also use some raid cds because as you can imagine there's a lot of damage at that stage of the phase so it's a good idea to use some personal cds as well to survive it now once these two knockbacks have been done and you have the new ad spawning you stay in that position until you get the next bulwark of the tyrant and then you continue throughout the rest of the fight moving around the edges of the room in a circular manner now there is a big difference with the ad in phase 3 compared to the ads in phase 1 and 2 which is that this ancient sovereign it has only one ability and it's called sovereign's ward what it does is it puts a shield on the boss which reduces damage taken by 90 percent so it's very ineffective dpsing the boss at that time obviously so what you do is you nuke the ad down and kill it before switching back to the boss yeah once the ad is dead and the boss is all that's left when the whole raid is still alive, the only thing you can wipe to are the Edicts of Condemnation. Now these Edicts in the last phase are going to be hurting a lot more than in the previous phases because of the last phase aura that you take increased damage. The first one you can decide to soak in the raid, but after the first one you want to sacrifice every single one of them. 
Now as mentioned, if the head dies and the boss is others left, just spread out before the last Edict of Condemnation, so the Raid can just move out of the thing himself, even if the person can't blink. Now we also have a couple of tips and tricks for this fight, and some weak arrows to share with you guys. First of all, because the tank damage is so high, Warriors that can taunt with Die by the Sword are really good at the start of Phase 3, and even later in the fight once their cooldown comes up again. So at the start of Phase 3, you can have a Warrior taunt the boss towards the cross, and tank it until their Die by the Sword is about to expire. Then the tanks need to take the boss back before the boss actually hits the Warrior and kills him. Now to track this, I have a weak arrow for you in the description below, but you need to make sure that you change the name of the Warrior in your guild to the correct one. Now the other tip is for phase 1, it's again another weak aura. As we mentioned before, you can stand still for the first 2 ticks of Infernal Tempest and then move to the side for the 3rd and 4th and then move back to your original position. Now an easy way to keep track of the ticks from the Infernal Tempest is the weak aura that we also will have linked in the description below. And what it does is it shows a number that is counting up the ticks. And also you have the sounds of some guy counting them, like 1, 2, 3, 4. So once you've heard the guy say 2, you move to the side. Once you hear him say 4, you move back. Super easy, will make it a lot easier to minimize your movement and not have random spawns of the circles on the ground all over the place, killing people off. Now another important thing is that you need to keep track of your HP throughout the whole fight, because... As we mentioned, you have the aura of oppression throughout the whole fight into phase 2 and 3. So if your HP is really low, you do not, and I repeat, you do not want to move at all. You need to wait, stand still, get some heals off or use a health tonic and then continue your movement. It's very important, especially at the start of phase 3, because everyone is moving from the middle of the room towards the edge of it so there's a lot of movement there but if you see that your hp is very low take a second stand still get a couple of heals and then finish off your movement you don't want to just rush there and die and feel like a noob and one last tip for this fight is that the boss actually has taunt the mission returns and you don't want that to happen. To keep track of this, I've linked the weak arrow in the description below, thanks to Slootback's website. Now if you use this weak arrow, you see an icon with a stack counter and a timer on it. The stack counter will go up to 5, at which point the boss will be immune to taunt. And after 20 seconds, the boss will reset her taunt diminishing returns. Now if you also have a warrior taunting at the start of phase 3, it's especially important to reset these taunt diminishing returns before the phase starts, but otherwise you're going to run into problems. And that's all you need to know about this fight. As always, we're gonna mention the debuffs now that you need to keep track of. Now, the most important one is the Font of Corruption, which is the debuff in Phase 2. If you have it, you're gonna explode around you. Make sure that you move to the group where the fonts are supposed to go and make sure that you move back into the group without debuffs once it has expired. Then the second debuff, which is mainly for the healers, but you could also track it if you're a DPS, is the Touch of Harm, which is the healing absorb debuff that also does a little bit of damage to the player, which can get dispelled and it jumps over to someone else. But mainly you just want to pump a lot of heals and absorb shields on the one guy and just get rid of it as fast as possible. Now, the healers need to keep track of it for sure. And if a DPSer sees that he has this debuff and he's going to take some damage from other abilities in the fight, like the Edict, he can pop a personal cooldown just to make sure that he survives. Now, the last debuff is Seal of Decay. This is for the tanks only, as this is the debuff the Tyrant will apply to them. Now, you can swap with this debuff at two or three stacks, but keep in mind the taunt diminishing returns that are going to happen if you swap too often and too fast. Now, this brings us to the end of the Mythic Tyrant Valhari Guide. We hope you can get this boss down pretty fast, and good luck killing it. Yeah, good luck to all of you AG users. Good luck getting the trinket, coining it. And remember to like, comment and subscribe for more Hellfire Citadel Mythic Guides. Oh, and did I mention that in Phase 3 you also do increased damage the longer you stay in the fight. Get ready for those juicy crits. See you next time, guys. Goodbye, everyone, and see you next time.